Welcome back. I just recently returned from filming a video for my creative business owner client, and we created two one minute marketing videos for her business. One's going to be on the main page. And then another one is going to be on a specialized service that she has. Both are a minute long, but when I'm creating videos for my branding clients, for businesses, I always love to create these end screens that, you know, cap off and end the video nicely with their logo and font and contact information. And I thought it would be helpful for you to know the three things that I have to ask my client and they need to provide me before I wrap up their video. And these are things, think of it like a checklist. People will be so excited about the video process and creating the video and what we're gonna do in the video. But these things are just, logistically, you wanna have them with you and in your file before you start the project. All right, the first one is pretty straightforward. You want their logo. If they have their logo file, preferably with a transparent background, that's going to look great on video. So if you can see here, I started some of these videos with a nice logo, transparent background, and it looks great. The second thing is if font color is important to the project, I also ask about the font color. Now, I like getting the RGB numbers because then in Final Cut Pro, you can type these in and you can get the exact brand color for your client. The third item can get tricky and that's gonna be the bulk of the video and it's all about the font. Now, there's kind of three paths for the font. One, the easiest way, if they have the TTF file, if they can send that to you, then that's one method and I'm going to walk you through how you can add that to your font book and then that will create or appear in Final Cut Pro. And I did this with a client, they had a custom font, so this is where you needed that TTF file. Okay, so when your client sends over the file, the TTF file for the font that they use, and maybe it's something custom, they have the file, they send it over. When you simply double click on the font file that you download, it's going to launch your font book on your MacBook Pro now or your MacBook. Now, I've already downloaded it. Instead of replace, it would say install. You click, you simply install, and then you need to close down Final Cut Pro and reopen Final Cut Pro, and then this font will be available for you in the text. So that's how you simply, you get that file, can install, and you're on your way. For the second option is if they have a font that might be more general, you could go to either Google Fonts or if you have an Adobe package or a membership, you can go into Adobe Fonts and do a search for that font. You can download and it will appear in Final Cut Pro, which happened with this Cliverfy project. She is Cliverfer. She told me the font names. I looked them up in Adobe, downloaded, they appeared in Final Cut. That's always great. If a client for the third option isn't really honed in on a font, they just like something clean, then you could, there's so many font options in Final Cut Pro that you could get something close or something that they like and you could get some feedback when you send them to video to ask them to look at those fine details. Okay, so you want their brand logo, you want their brand colors, you want their font type, and there's a couple ways that we can integrate the font type into Final Cut Pro. Now let's dive into how I'm creating this end slide for the client. So to create an end screen or end slide like this, 
I'd love to connect with you. This is great for businesses that you're working with that you just want to cap off their marketing video or any sort of material any sort of video with contact information, maybe a picture of them, maybe it's just without a picture, whatever design you're going with. I thought I'd walk through how I create such end slides with the pieces of material we talked about. Their logo, hopefully transparent background, their font color, if that's important to the brand and for the project, and their actual font. So I wanted to walk through, I'm going to take this away. You can kind of see the structure here, but I'm gonna walk through how I create this. So my first thing is I need that background. So I normally just drag the custom one down and in the upper right-hand corner here, this is where you can really choose any color. If brand color is super important, you can see, you can click on the actual square and you can find you can fine tune and get really specific to what RGB or hex color code that they have and you can drop that in. I know I just need white, so I'm just going to go to the upper corner there and get my white background. You can see that there is a white square. If I drag this in, it's more like a gray smoky is what it's called i could simply click on this do bright white and now i have bright white so either method works obviously this is too long so i'm just going to shorten it a little bit by dragging my cursor over so now we have a great backdrop so i'm going to go back over to the files that my client has provided these are all the audio pieces all the pieces all the clips that we've captured and here are the different logos. This has a white background. Technically, I could use this because I have a white background. You're not going to see it, but I love using the vector files that have that transparent background. So this is what it looks like when it's transparent. And this is just a different, um, she gave me everything that she had. This is a JPEG. So I'm just going to grab one of these transparent backgrounds and drag it over, click and drag, and then I'll shorten this. Now, depending on this design, maybe this is how we're ending the video. That's great. But I love doing like a nice slow fade in, fade out. Again, preference on the project. And I go over to this transitions over on this right hand side here. And I love doing like a cross dissolve. And then when I drop in, it will do a beginning in the end. If you don't want one of them, you can simply just delete it. Or if you want both, you can keep that too. So I'm always playing back. I'd love to connect with you. And that's a nice, that's a nice fade in, fade out. But if I want to play with the scale and add contact information, once I highlight the logo, I'm going to go up to scale here in the right hand box. And I'm just going to scale it down. I still want it to be prominent. And then I'm going to use the transform button here. And this is where I can move it around. So I'm just going to move it up a little bit, give myself some space for the text. Now for her text, I, she provided me the names. I was able to go into Adobe and grab that font. So now I can go over to my, in the upper, left hand corner, go over to my titles and I can just grab a lot of these are things that I have purchased. So um, a lot of, so I'm just going to grab, it could be the continuous, it could just be a custom. I just want it straightforward, basic title. That'll do. I'm just going to click, drag that over, shorten that bar. Now it's coming in white. So it's hard to see. It's going to click done on that logo. It's coming in white. In the right hand box here, I'm just going to click on the text, which is next to that T. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to change it to black so I can see where the text is landing. There it is right in the center. And I'm going to 
write her name. And we want her email address. Okay. And I'm going to use the transform tool and I'm going to bring that down to where I want it. And then I'm going to go into the font. So these are a lot of these are what Final Cut Pro will provide you. Some of these have been added for client work. I know that hers starts with an R, so I'm just going to click R on my um, keyboard so it brings me down to the R, and here is the text that she uses. Now, I'm going, it is a thin text, that's what she uses, so I'm just going to boost it, the size up a little bit so you can see a little bit more. I'm then, I could do another text box by simply Highlighting the text box, do Command C for copy, Command V for paste, and it will put one right on top. Now it will also be on top of the other one since I did a, a copy and paste. So I can just drag that down because the transform tool is on. And I can add her website. Now I'm just going to scale that down a little bit and just create some separation there. That looks good. So then I can play it back. I'd love to connect with you. Okay. So I don't have, so there's a fade in on the logo. We could do a fade in again on the text. Another option, and let's do this, is a fade out. Now, a lot of times people want to fade out to black, which is great. If your client more is a light and bright, maybe they want to fade out to white. This is how you do it. I'm going to go over to the transitions again. In the search box down below, I'm going to write fade, type fade, and you'll have fade to color. I'm going to slide this over. I'm going to click on this and drag to the end of my clip. And it's highlighted so you can see now this right hand, upper right hand boxes change. This is where you can change the color. So if I, let me just minimize this. If I play it back, you can see it fades to black. I'm going to change it to white. And if I play it back, what I'd love to connect with It's fading to the white. So different options there. It just gives a nice polish end to the end slide. Okay, and you can see you can play around with all different other, um, I just keep it simple and that seems to work out well. Okay, so that's playing with the brand logo. If you need a, uh, brand color, this is a way you can incorporate it, but the brand font is another key piece to crafting these end slides. Now, in the original example, I showed you when I added a photo. So this is kind of a clean end slide. All you need to do if you wanted a photo, I'm just going to use the transform tool, is I'm just going to play with the scale and I'm just going to reduce the size of this. I'm going to move everything over. And it's another way you can move the scale. Okay. And over in her, click done. In the files, we have her photo. And I'm just going to click and drag it over. And it always drops in the middle, line it up with everything. And I'm just going to hit the transform tool and bring it over to whatever side we want. We can have it flush to the side. We could have a little border there. I think I'm going to do that. And if I want this, I don't want it to be like a harsh in, harsh out. So I'm going to do the transition. I'm just going to X clear that the cross dissolve to come back in. 
so then everything is nice and soft. Play it back. I love to connect. That's nice. Okay, so that is the end screen. And that is that end slide for brand video that your business clients will love. Okay, if you loved this video, then you're gonna love this next one. I outline all the things to consider when you're offering video to your next client. So I'll see you there.